Hello and welcome to this video on how to make the most out of Miro as a product manager. If you're in product management, you already know that tools that make it easy to work with your team, your designers, your engineers are priceless. That's why Miro has been a go-to for so many of us. But here is the exciting news. At their recent Canvas 24 event back in October, Miro unveiled some incredible new features that take things to a whole new level. These updates are designed to help PMs not only work faster with their teams, but also drive better outcomes for their product areas. In this video, I wanted to walk you through six of these new features, share how they can be applied to your day-to-day -day as a PM, and give you some insider tips on how to use them effectively. Check out the link in the description below for more detailed information on each of these features after you've watched this video to the end. Let's start with Miro Docs. If you've ever struggled to convert a feature brainstorming session to a well-structured document, this feature is gonna be a lifesaver. Miro Docs allows you to create polished documents directly on your board by pulling in content from sticky notes, diagrams, and images. For example, let's imagine you've just finished a big brainstorming session for an upcoming feature with your team and with stakeholders. Instead of opening up another tool to write a product brief for the next three hours, you can just let Miro's AI create a product brief with the click of a button in just a few seconds. You could also have it write a summary of the brainstorm session. Once that brief has been created, you can start editing it in full screen mode. You can change the tone of different sections, shorten sections, rewrite parts of it, or even apply a custom prompt. You also have all the normal doc editing features that you might expect. You can use markdown, you can use bullets, numbered lists, stuff like that. Finally, you can add in comments and very easily collaborate with your team to just make a great doc overall. This feature is gonna be such a game changer for you throughout the entire product development process, and I'm very excited for you to try it out. Next, let's talk about tables. Tables in Miro makes it possible to organize information dynamically directly on your board. For example, during a backlog grooming session, you can create a table to list out your features, assign effort estimates, and track dependencies. Then you can add in start and end dates to each row. You're able to then visualize those tasks in a timeline view and move stuff around as you and your team see fit. As a product manager, you'll frequently get asked to share updates on timelines, milestones, stuff like that. Having this table feature where you can track everything in one single place and then view it in a timeline view is gonna make communicating with those stakeholders a lot easier. The other good thing about the table feature is that anyone on your team can easily update the table and it's reflected on everyone's board in real time. Next up is video calls. Nowadays, tech teams are dispersed across the country or even globally. This means that most of the time, in order to collaborate on a project, you need to get on a video call. We all know that that means opening one tab or application for the video call and then screen sharing. I personally want to see my coworkers' faces and the screen in question, but that gets hard to manage, especially on a laptop. That's why I'm so excited about this feature. With Miro's new built-in video calls, you can talk to your team directly on the board, just all in one place. It just makes it a lot easier. So here's some advice. If your team ever needs to get on a call to discuss a really complex problem, instead of going to Zoom or Google Meets, I'd fire up a video call on a Miro board. That way, when you all inevitably start talking about something very complex, you can just start using the board to keep the discussion focused and document any decisions or action items. One more pro tip, you should run your team retros on Miro. Discussing what went well and what could be improved directly on the board feels a lot more interactive than just a plain document. Plus, seeing each other's reactions and votes in real time adds a layer of an empathy and engagement to the conversation. And finally, Miro's AI can actually summarize key takeaways or action items from the retro, making it so easy to actually improve your team following a retro. Okay, next up is one of my personal favorites. It's called Catch Up. This tool will help summarize what happened on the board since the last time you viewed it. So anyone who missed a session can quickly get up to speed. For example, imagine your engineering lead missed a roadmap alignment meeting with your team. Instead of scheduling a separate follow-up, which adds even more meetings to your already busy calendar, you can just directly have them use the catch-up feature on the board to quickly get up to speed with what happened at the previous session. 
Next up is spaces and sections. As a PM, you're often juggling multiple work streams. You have roadmaps, sprint plans, dashboards, stakeholder presentations, notes, and maybe a few random documents floating around. It's easy to waste time constantly hunting down the right file or link when you need it most. So that's where sections and spaces comes in. Spaces allow you to organize all the different parts of your team into one central location. So you can think of it like your command center. You can group related boards, embed third-party documents, dashboards, and even presentations into clearly labeled sections within that space. For example, if you're managing a product launch, you might create sections for market research, design assets, sprint plans, and then launch metrics. Everything your team needs to stay aligned can be there in one place. The real beauty of spaces and sections is that it just keeps everyone on the same page, literally. Whether it's your engineering team looking for sprint priorities, your design team accessing assets, or your marketing team just reviewing the launch plan, all of those key resources are organized and accessible in just one spot. I make it a habit to actually set up a space at the start of every major initiative. Take 10 to 15 minutes to just organize your boards and links into sections, share the space with your team, and you can even bookmark it in a Slack channel dedicated to your project. This small upfront investment will save you hours of back and forth later on throughout that project because you've created a single source of truth for it. It's an easy way to build credibility, save time, and just keep your projects moving forward very smoothly. Your engineers, designers, and stakeholders will thank you later. Finally, let's look at widgets. And these are APM's secret weapon for facilitating engaging meetings and sessions. Whether it's dot voting, t-shirt sizing, or polls, these tools bring a level of interactivity that makes decision-making faster and more inclusive. Here's a quick example. So during a roadmap prioritization meeting, you could use dot voting to let your teams visually rank features. It's democratic, transparent, and eliminates those endless debates. Or during sprint planning, you could use t-shirt sizing to estimate effort for tasks in a way that's fun and intuitive. It's particularly useful when your team is new to story points and just needs a simple way to start. And there you have it, six of Miro's newest features unveiled at their Canvas 24 event that are tailor-made for product managers. From creating polished docs with Miro docs to organizing projects in dynamic tables, these tools are really designed to streamline your workflows and enhance collaboration with your team. Whether you are just aligning your team over a feature, facilitating workshops, or tracking progress on a project, Miro is making it easier than ever to focus on what matters most. That's driving impact for your product. As mentioned, check out the link in the description below for more information on all the different features that they launched in their innovation workspace at the Canvas 24 event. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the features that I shared or any features you're excited to use. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.